Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. Just got back from NAM 2016 in Anaheim. This is January 21st, day one at NAM, and of course I'm covering digital keyboards. So let me report to you what I found. I made some notes over here. I'm going to go in alphabetical order so as not to give any manufacturer precedence or anything like that. So let's start out with Casio. And some of these are new as of today, and others are new for me. They were recently released, but I haven't tried it until I got to the show today. So, we're starting out with Casio, the Salviano Grand Hybrid. And there's two models, as you know, the GP300 and the GP500. Now, I've tried both models and of course, when you're at NAMM, the noise level is so loud. They give you these headphones to try it with, and the headphones aren't that great. But they did have a demo room where I did get a chance to check out the GP300 in a closed door environment, so I got to hear it firsthand. And it is impressive. Now there's three different pianos. There's the uh, Berlin, the Vienna, and the Hamburg. And they're not allowed to say, of course, the actual manufacturer name, but you can probably guess that the Berlin is um, the Beckstein, and the Vienna is the Bosendorfer, and so on and so forth. But basically, I was impressed with the, um, the Berlin, as well as the Hammond. The other one, the Bosendorfer, I mean, there's so many variations of those, but compared to the other two, I like these the best. Now, the big thing was the feel, the action. As you may already know, the action was developed in conjunction with Beckstein, which is a really well-known manufacturer of acoustic pianos. And it uses full wooden key sticks you know balanced on a fulcrum and the whole kind of shot right there so now you've got a third acoustic piano manufacturer that has entered the picture the first two being kawaii and yamaha that manufacture acoustic pianos and have gotten into the digital piano thing so now all three bextein and yamaha and kawaii are now into the digital piano realm and the keyboard action on all three of those manufacturers and their digital piano equivalents, Beckstein, of course, with their marriage to Casio, is phenomenal. It's great. So if you get a chance, you want to try all three of those if you can and judge for yourself which one you like the best. All right, now Korg. We've got a lot of stuff here for Korg, and, and a lot of this is not new, uh, or it is recently new, but not new as of today. Um, we've got the Korg Kronos, okay? And, oh, I said I was going to go in alphabetical order. Let me back up a second. Kawhi would come next. There's nothing really new that we don't already know about, but supposedly there will be some new entries in the summer. All right, so let's move on to Korg now. The Korg Kronos is released in a silver casing now. It looks really nice, really sharp, but it's nothing new. It's not different than the current Kronos offerings. Okay, then we have the Korg Liverpool Ranger. One quick look at that, and you'll see why they call it the Liverpool, but it is a professional arranger. And it is, uh, it, it's pretty nice. All right, then you have a couple different Korg micro keys. You've got the micro key two, which even has an input for damper pedals. Now that's really cool. And then you have the Korg micro key air. And it's called air because it can transmit through the air wirelessly and to your iPad, your iPhone, and your, or your Mac. Right? It uses batteries, and supposedly the batteries will last about a month. Now, I'm not sure how they come up with that one-month figure. I mean, is that playing 24-7, or is it playing once a week, or what is it? 
So when they make a statement like that where it lasts an entire month, we actually need a little bit more data to see how they came up with that statement. What is that based on? Okay, then we have the Korg Vox Continental. Unfortunately, it was a prototype, so it's roped off. You couldn't touch it. You couldn't play with it. You couldn't hear it, but it looks really cool. You know, the old Vox, it's a prototype. So I can't wait to see what that actually turns out like when they finally release that. And one more thing for the Korg online, they have the Korg B1, which is an entry level digital piano. It's pretty nice, I tried it. Uh, then we move on, Kurzweil, uh, basically the thing I was impressed with was the new Kurzweil Forte SE. Now I've reviewed the Kurzweil Forte, which is their flagship model and still is, but now you can get the Forte SE, which is a scaled down version of the Forte, and still very good for a lot less price. So we'll be trying to cover that at some point in the future. Nord, okay. A lot of you have watched some of my Nord videos, but the Nord Piano 3, now this is something that you should pay attention to because it offers new keyboard action. It's ivory touch. It has triple sensor technology. So they're finally catching up with the rest of the professional digital pianos. But again, Nord, you know, that's the manufacturer where it's the cases are red and you've got a button or a knob for everything. So you don't need to go through menus. Whatever you want, there's a dedicated button or knob for it. That's what makes Nord so unique, so great. And the sounds are so good. And of course, when you go with a Nord, you get free updates on piano samples and everything else in their sample libraries for life. And which actually should be taken with a grain of salt because for life is for life of the product. When they come up with a new OS and so on and so forth, all of a sudden the uh, product that you have won't load that. In addition to the new action, which is still a Fatar action, but a much better Fatar action that one, than what was previously used, they have one gigabyte of memory now for Nord Piano Library samples and 256 megabytes for the Nord Sample Library samples. All effects now are in stereo. The Nord Piano 3 now comes with the triple pedal, which is cool because that's usually a $500 optional purchase. And it has a new, much bigger OLED display, much of an improvement over the previous cigarette size display that they had on their previous models. And they have something called virtual hammer action technology, which I'm not sure what they're trying to convey to you here with a virtual hammer action, but you know, I'll try and get one of these here and review that for you. And Ravenworks, when you've heard of Ravenscroft Acoustic Pianos, they're one of the finest in the world. And they have their digital branch called Ravenworks Digital. Now they have, in addition to their previous VPC-1 custom modded keyboards, they now have a VPC-1 standard custom modded keyboard called Wavenworks. And it comes in a great cobalt blue. And I tried it and I absolutely fell in love with that action. That action is much better to me than the previous mods that they've done. And if I had $6,000 to spend on the Ravenworks, I would do it. But I don't, and to tell you the truth, I like the Kawai MP11 that I have with the Grand Feel Action. That suits my needs just fine. But if I had the money to blow, I would definitely pick up one of those controllers, that Ravenworks 
VPC one watt modded controller. Oh my God, that action was so good to die for. All right, then we go over to Roland and they have a bunch of mini analog boards available. And they have a new entry level piano called the FP30 and it's pretty good. So you might want to try that out. And last but not least is Yamaha. Uh, they've kind of been silent for a while, with the exception of the CP4, but when it comes to their big flagship model, now you have the new Yamaha Montage, which is now the successor to the successful Motif series. And it comes in the model 6, 7, and 8, meaning 60-some-odd keys, 70-some-odd keys, and 88 keys. So... And it's got a sophisticated dynamic control. It's got massive sound creation capabilities. It has an awesome motion control synthesis. And you just got to see it and hear it. Analog to digital inputs. You know, there's so much more to this board that I just can't cover this in this video. So that's going to be a separate video altogether. That is one impressive board they came out. So now they're upping the ante a bit with what they've come out with in that montage. It's really cool. So that covers it for digital. For acoustic, I was a little bit disappointed that Fazioli wasn't there this year. They were there the past couple of years. One of the finest pianos in the world. They weren't there. So the top of the line piano manufacturer that was there on the third floor where all the other pianos are is Ravenscroft. And boy, what a nice piano. Now, in a separate building run by Yamaha, the Yamaha has the Yamaha pianos and they have the Bosendorfer pianos. Of course, you all know by now that Yamaha bought Bosendorfer they are keeping that division separate and still run by Bosendorfer. It's just that the ownership is now Yamaha. So I haven't been to that section yet, the acoustic section of Yamaha, which includes Yamaha and Bosendorfer pianos. Steinway, again, absent this year. They're absent almost every year. That seems to be the norm for them. But then again, the whole world knows about Steinway. They really don't need to be there. And last but not least, um, my piano hero or idol when I was growing up was Keith Emerson of Emerson Lake and Palmer. I finally got a chance to meet him, got a picture with him, and I got an autographed picture with him as well. So that is so cool. That is my NAM report for day one at NAM 2016 in Anaheim. More to come. Stay tuned. Piano Man Shock. Peace out. Thanks for watching.